coming up on Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. See, good marriages are not marriages without anger. Everybody gets angry. Good marriages are marriages where you can process it quickly. You can get bad emotions out of your marriage quickly. You know, when, you, when you're constantly thinking negative or hearing negative and it's getting inside of you, you know, it's just like anything else. You fill it up and fill it up and finally it has to come out. You know, you can't keep it bottled up forever. This is called the habits of emotionally healthy marriage because habits, disciplines, and traditions are everything in marriage. Your habits will predict your future. What you do on a regular basis is the most important thing in your marriage. It's not what you do every now and then. It's what you do regularly that's gonna predict your future. And so the word habit, the definition of the word habit is an acquired behavior pattern regularly followed until it has become almost involuntary. And when it says acquired there, it means at some point you begin. At some point you may not have had this habit forever. And by the way, research proves that it takes about 60 days, about two months from the time you begin to do something new until the wiring in your brain changes until it becomes a habit, an acquired behavior. And so almost involuntary. So when Karen and I get up in the mornings today, 43 years later, after we get married, we're, you know, we, we're, we're old married people. We're kind of on just autopilot, you know. And we, there's just things that we do. And, and thankfully, they're good things that keep our marriage strong, that we're strong personally. But when we first got married, we had horrible habits that we got into that almost ended our marriage. So I want to talk to you about good habits in marriage. Let me say this, no marriage that is good is good because of chemistry uh, or because you married your soulmate or because of good luck. That doesn't exist. All marriage requires work. You have to work at marriage for it to work. In Genesis 2.24, God gave us the four foundational laws of marriage. The first law is, God says, for this cause, a man will leave his father and his mother. It's the law of priority. Marriage only works in first place. If your work comes before your marriage, your marriage will not work. If your children come before your marriage, your marriage will not work. If anything except for Jesus comes before your marriage, your marriage won't work because the number one law, not principle, not truth, the number one law of marriage is it only works in first place. The second law of marriage, it says a man will cleave, he'll leave his father and mother and cleave into his wife. The word cleave there is not a familiar word to us in the English language. And so it's very difficult for us to comprehend it. But in the Hebrew language, it's the word dabak. It says a man will cleave into his wife. The word cleave means to pursue with all your energy. It means you work at it. From the, and by the way, the reason that we know that God didn't say that just to Adam and Eve is they didn't have a mother. It says for this cause a man will leave his mother and his father. God was speaking this to all people who would ever be married and he was saying, marriage is only gonna work now if it's first in your life and if you're willing to work at it because marriage is work. You're gonna have to pursue your spouse with energy. And so this requires work. And so I wanna talk about the four habits of emotionally healthy couples. Now for some of you that are watching this, listening to this right now, you're, you're saying, uh, after I get through with this message, you'll say, yeah, we do one of those or we do two of those. That's right. The ones that you're not doing, you're going to have to work at implementing this into your marriage. It's not going to happen automatically. But once you've worked at it for a month or two, it'll just become the default setting. And now you'll replace bad habits with good habits. For some of you, you don't do any of this stuff. But again, you can change a bad marriage simply by changing the habit patterns in your marriage. And the wonderful thing is, it doesn't take a long time. In a matter of days or weeks, you can have a new marriage simply by changing the patterns, the disciplines and traditions in your marriage so that you have and maintain a healthy marriage for the rest of your lives. So let me talk about the four habits of emotionally healthy couples. Number one is praying together and trusting God. Now this is one that came very difficult for us as a couple. You know, we prayed a little bit individually, but we really didn't know how to pray that well anyway. But it was several years into our marriage before we prayed our first prayer together. In fact, I think it was about 
four years into our marriage before we prayed our first prayer together. It changed everything. And today we don't worry. We, we do not, one of the ethics in our home is we do not let anxiety into our home about anything. When, we, when there is the first hint of worry and anxiety, we hold hands and we pray. Karen and I used to walk in the mornings together for many years. We uh, don't do that as much anymore, but we have, still have times that we pray together. Uh, we like to sit on the back porch at night and talk, and if there's anything in our family going on, that's the time that we you know, pray together in, in the car or just around the house or whatever. But find a time for it. And you know, you don't have, it doesn't have to be legalistic, but you should be praying together as a couple two or three times a week. Especially if there's something going on that causes anxiety or stress. It really, really dramatically helps. Number one, praying together and trusting God. It should be a habit in your marriage. Number two, resolving negative feelings daily. Ephesians 4, it says be angry. The apostle Paul's telling us how to deal with anger. Be angry, don't sin, don't let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. So I talked about that last time. Be angry. It's okay to be angry. There's nothing wrong with anger. God gets angry. So yesterday's anger is a problem. Today's anger is not a problem. Don't sin. Don't be unchristian. Don't be mean-spirited. A lot of times Christian people, especially in marriage, do really immature, non-Christian things justifying it. Don't do that. Go ahead and have, have anger in your marriage. That's a healthy thing when it's present. Don't sin. Don't let the sun go down in your anger. This is a habit. Don't ever let the sun go down in your anger. You make a habit in your marriage, we're not gonna go to bed angry. Let me, let me say about this, and that is, the later it gets, the more humble you'll become. If you make, if you make a, just a, a discipline that says we're not gonna go to bed angry, you know, I, I, Karen and I both go to bed early, and so the later it gets, the more humble I become. About 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night, it's all my fault. <laughs> Six or seven at night, I still have a lot of fight in me, but later it comes, I'm, so I just say I'm sorry, let's go to bed. So we're not gonna go to bed angry. You'll give the devil a foothold. If you go to bed on anger, Diabolos, the slanderer, will interpret your spouse's behavior. And after three years of marriage, every belief I had about Karen Evans came from the devil. I was completely convinced that Karen was all of the problem and she was the wrong person for me and that I had made a mistake. That's what happens when you go to bed on anger. I was under the influence of Diabolos. Okay. So let me say two things. If you're going to have anger in your marriage and be able to process it, see, good marriages are not marriages without anger. Everybody gets angry. Okay. Good marriages are marriages where you can process it quickly. You can get bad emotions out of your marriage quickly. Okay. So how do you do that? Number one, you give your spouse the right to complain. In a good department store that you go to, they have a good customer relations counter. And it, they don't shame you when you bring something back because they're trying to please you. They're trying to be a good store. That's a good spouse. A good husband, a good wife says to their spouse, I want to do the best I can. I know I'm not being a good husband till you tell me I am. I know you're, I'm not being a good wife till you tell me I am. I'm trying to please you. I'm not trying to please me. So I'm not going to be defensive. And so if there's ever anything that I'm doing that's bothering you, I won't, I won't shame you. I won't yell at you and I won't make you pay a price. Now, I may not agree with you. We may have to talk through it. But I want you to know that I have a customer relations counter because I really want to be the best spouse I can be. And if you have something to say, I want you to say it. Let me say this now. In all the marriage counseling I've done over the years, you find a really bad marriage, they can't talk. And if someone complains, they go ballistic. You, you have to be able to get things out if you're gonna have a functional, healthy marriage. The second thing is this. So I have a customer relations counter where I want you to complain, but there's a big difference between complaining and criticizing. Complaining and criticizing are opposite. Listen, you can't criticize in marriage. Criticizing is pointing your finger and making accusations. And you come at your spouse, your spouse says, well, I want you to complain. If, if you need to complain, you say, well, you did this and you did this and you, you can't do that. Immediately people get on the defensive when you begin to come at them and criticize. Complaining is not about you. Complaining is about me. So let's say Karen said something that hurt my feelings. And I come to Karen and I say, Karen, I, I need to say something to you and I, I love you. And you know we're on the same team, we're gonna get through this. But you said something to me that bothered me. I have no idea what you meant by it. You probably didn't mean anything by it. But can I tell you how it made me feel? That's what complaining is. I'm, not a I'm just telling you how I feel. So I'm not making any accusations at you I'm not attacking you. I'm not impugning your character. I'm simply saying, and I may feel this way because I'm immature. 
I may feel this way because I'm misunderstood. I may feel this way because I'm just sensitive because of something that happened before. But I just want to be honest so I can get this out in the open and we can get this, get this done. Okay, criticizing, Karen says something to me that hurts my feelings, here's what criticizing is. You know, Karen, you said that and it hurt my feelings and I know exactly what you meant by it because you're evil like your mother. <laughs> and you were trying to pay me back, I know exactly what you did. So the judge and jury have met, you're guilty, but if you'll confess, we'll go light on you. <laughs> See, everybody hates that, everybody hates that. So in a good marriage, we can process anger because we're not gonna go to bed on it, give the devil an opportunity, but we have an open customer relations counter where you can come and complain and we're going to deal honestly and righteously with each other. Anger comes and goes and the love stays. Number three, habit of emotionally healthy couples is having fun together and being best friends. It's how you fell in love. You know, you fall in love having fun together. You fall out of love because you stop having fun together. And by the way, this is one of the most important needs of men. Uh, when the top four needs of men, period, being friends with their wives is a major, major need of men. We want to be buddies with our wives. We don't want to be mothered by our wives. We had a mother. We don't want another one. We want a wife. And we want our wife to be our buddy. There's a preacher in Houston who tells the story of a couple whose marriage had become very um, bad and uh, they were really dealing with a lot of problems. And so the husband was going hunting and the wife did not hunt, but this was a very smart wife. And the wife said to her husband, can I go hunting with you? And, uh, and they'd been having a lot of trouble in their marriage and he said, you don't hunt. She said, I know, but I wanna go hunting with you. He was a little worried she wanted to get him in the woods with a firearm. And as you can imagine, that, that was a little troublesome. But it healed their marriage. She came out of her world into his world. They had fun. Listen to me. You're never better than when you're having fun. You show me a husband and a wife having fun together, you're at your very best. We fall in love because you take sex and fun away from marriage, you have a business relationship. And marriage is a rotten business relationship. We need to be having fun with each other in marriage. And it just simply means one is a date night. You ought, to, you ought to have a date night every week. It's a good discipline. It's a good habit of good marriages. A date night means our kids are not going to run our lives. We love our kids. We're going to get our kids taken care of. But we're not going to let work and kids and everything suck out the romance and fun from our marriage. We're going to find something fun to do. We're going to go to a lot of trouble. And we're going to go do it regularly so that we do not lose the skills of pursuing each other and romance in our relationship. And if we have lost them, they'll come back. The other thing is just having time alone together. Karen and I, when our kids were younger, uh, we were broke. We didn't have any money. I mean, we were broke. And, but we made a discipline of going somewhere every six or seven or eight weeks together for a, a night or two. We would get my family or somebody to take care of our kids and we went to Pampa, we went to Lubbock, we went to Oklahoma City, we would drive, we, we would scrape together as much money we had to buy a motel, cheap motel room for a night or two. And, and we would take our food with us because we couldn't afford to eat out. And we would just go in many times into a, a motel room, shut the door and stay there for two days. And we came out and I'm telling you, we were refueled for another six to eight weeks. We have, Karen and I have fun together. And so having fun together and protecting that is important. Number four, this is the last one. Number four habit is building close relationships individually and as a couple with other believers. You're, this is 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Your friends are your future. Uh, remember here it says evil company corrupts good habits. If you raise children with good morals and put around bad kids, those bad kids will corrupt your kids. If you have good beliefs and you put yourself, your close friends or unbelievers, people who don't value God, they don't value their marriage, you're gonna end up like your friends. And it says, if you don't believe that, you're deceived. And so Hebrews 10 says, let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much more as you see the day approaching. And the word day there is capital D, it means the coming of Jesus. It means as the coming of Jesus draws near, the world is gonna be so evil, we need to get together with other believers more than ever before. And I'm saying to you, this is the most evil time in the history of the world. 
If there's ever been a time when we need to pursue and build relationships with other believers, it is right now. On Friday uh, afternoon, two days ago, Karen and I had lunch with Tom and Jan Lane. Tom, Tom was a pastor here uh, for many years. Uh, we came on staff together. Tom walked up to me one day in church and said, would you and Karen go out to eat pizza with Jan and me? We didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know anybody in the church. I mean, they were the first couple that we knew. And we went to eat pizza with them after uh, church and we got to know them. Let me say this now, I was struggling. There were things in my life as a Christian that I was struggling with at that time. I was 25 years old. And uh, we came to Trinity. I felt like the most unspiritual person in this church. And Tom, Tom and Jan's relationship was just absolutely critical in that time in our lives of helping us to mature as believers. And I thank God that we met them and became close to them rather than someone with a compromised faith and a compromised marriage. And I'm saying to you, your friends are your future, and you can love everybody, whether they're wherever they are in their walk with Christ, but your closest relationships need to be with strong believers. And the very best place to meet strong believers is in church, is in a life group, and like that. But when you look at couples who are chronically healthy, they're people of prayer and people of faith. They don't let anxiety build up in their relationship. They have the ability to resolve negative feelings and get the anger out of the way so they can keep the love there. They're friends, they, they enjoy being with each other and they value their relationship and prioritize their time together and don't let anything get in the way of it. And they have other believers around them who are a support group to them and help them do the right thing. Well, what you saw there on today's program, that teaching, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you got some help from that. But this comes from the Emotionally Healthy Marriage series. It's a five part seminar series that I do to help couples to have an emotionally healthy marriage. Karen and I got married, and we were devastated, honestly. Uh, just emotionally, we were both unhealthy, and it affects your marriage in a dramatic way. And your marriage really is never gonna be better than your level of emotional health. So this entire series helps you to heal, it helps you to grow, it helps you to understand some things about the way God made you, so that you can deal with issues and go on and, and grow as an individual. But every time you grow, as an individual, you're growing as a spouse, and you're growing in your ability to be married in a healthy way. And so maybe you've been through a marriage. Maybe you're going through a rough patch in your marriage right now. These resources can change your life and change your marriage and change your family for generations. Right now, for your gift of any amount, we want to get you the Emotionally Healthy Marriage CD series, the audio series, the entire five-part series. If you give right now $55 or more, we want to send you the CD series with my 21-day Inner Healing Journey app. This is so powerful. Thousands of people have done it, and it goes even on a deeper level to help you to heal, and I would encourage you to do it as a couple. I think it would be a fantastic thing to go through as a couple, but you can also go through it individually. And for your gift of $110 or more right now, we, were, we wanna ask you to be as generous as you can to help us here at Marriage Today to save marriages, to keep little kids uh, parents together and to keep families together. But if you give $110 or more right now, we will send you the Emotionally Healthy Marriage DVD series, the entire five-part series, along with the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey app. Tremendous amount of ministry, tremendous amount of information there. And we want to put these into your hands. And here's more details about how you can get these. Regardless of how unhealthy or broken your marriage may seem today, you can have an emotionally healthy marriage. Support Marriage Today with your best online gift of any amount, and we'll send you Jimmy Evans' five-part teaching, Emotionally Healthy Marriage. In this powerful series, Jimmy shares practical, easy-to-follow disciplines to renew your marriage. Receive the five-part CD series and the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey app for your gift of $55 or more. The 21-Day Inner Healing Journey will guide you step-by-step -step through 21 daily plans, including personal application exercises, daily videos, and much more. For your gift of $110 or more, you'll receive the five-part DVD series along with the 21-Day Inner Healing Journey app. In a matter of days or weeks, you can have a new marriage simply by changing the patterns, the disciplines and traditions in your marriage so that you have and maintain a healthy marriage for the rest of your life. Experience emotionally healthy marriage today.
Well, this program today, we're talking about the habits of emotionally healthy couples. Now, this, this entire series that we're offering today on the program is called Emotionally Healthy Marriage. And you can have an emotionally healthy marriage. But we talk about five major areas uh, in marriage in the overall series. But we're talking specifically today, Karen, about the habits of emotionally healthy couples. And so one of the habits, there's four that we talk about, but we kind of want to talk specifically about one, and that is resolving negative emotions mm -hmm. daily. Okay, this this is anger. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, early in our marriage, you had anger issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, you you kind of came into the marriage with anger issues. And I had many of my own problems. Okay, mm -hmm. in the marriage, I was dominant and all this stuff. But but talk about anger for just a minute, and how things changed in our marriage, and how you learned to deal with anger and the way you deal with it today. Well, I think growing up, I I was never given a voice. You know, so. When issues would come up in, in our life, you know, and of course I wasn't raised a Christian, you know, it, I, I was stuff it. You know, I, would, I, wouldn't, I didn't know how to deal with the hurt. I didn't know how to deal with, you know, the way I was spoken to or things that were said about me. And then I began the, those self-talks of self-hate and all the negative thinking. And so, you know, when, you, when you're constantly thinking negative or hearing negative and it's getting inside of you, you know, it's just like anything else. You fill it up and fill it up and finally it has to come out. You know, you can't keep it bottled up forever. And so, like in our marriage, you know, I would feel, you know, like you weren't misunderstanding me or you weren't um, contributing enough in the marriage. And I would get, I would just sit there and seethe and get so frustrated. And I would be like, ah, and then you would just be like, what is your problem? And I'd be like, and I'd be slamming the cupboards. And, <laughs> and you know, it, it, I didn't really do a lot of screaming. I did more, you more know. More than you can remember. No, I did, I did more of the cupboards and the driving off fast and, and, you know, so because so, I could, you have to have an outlet. I mean, it's just like yeah. anything else. You've got to have an outlet. Yeah. And so, um, but I didn't realize, you know, how destructive that was, you know, not just for our marriage, but for myself. I mean, you know, you can't keep that kind of stuff inside of you and it not affect you or your spouse. And, um, and so I think being honest, you know, getting honest with, you know, that and, and, and when I'd read the word of God and it said, don't you know, sin and anger. And I was thinking, okay, did I sin? Because I don't know if I sinned. You know, you play these gymnastics with your head of what's right and wrong. And then, you know, finally, I just, it's just like I said before, I got so sick of the way I was. You know, I wanted to change. You know, and I'd read the scriptures where it says, put on love instead of the anger. Mm -hmm. You know, walk in love, be patient and, and kind. And I can just remember, you know, that part of the anger is impatience. You know, you just get so impatient because everybody's not doing it your way or, and, and I still deal with that. You know, I still deal with, it's not anywhere near what it was before, but I have to tell you the story. So the other morning I was, I was having my quiet time and I said, Lord, am I okay? Am I doing everything okay? And he goes, well, actually you're not okay in the car. And I mean, I knew it was God. And like, it was just like God was saying, Karen, if you could really, it's not really fun being in the car with you. And I'm just like, oh Thank my you, gosh. Lord. And I got so convicted of how I am because I really am bad in the car. I mean, I'm just ranting and raving to everybody on the highway. It's like, who gave you your license? And it's just like, <laughs> it's, it's for the first time I could really feel like, okay, God, thank you for pointing that out. Because hearing him say it, hearing God say it, it's like, Hey, we were going to work on this a little more. <laughs> well, I, I think that, and we're almost out of time, so the reason I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of interrupting here, but you have changed dramatically mm -hmm. in our marriage. I mean, I, I had all kinds of issues, so it wasn't your fault at all. But the only thing I would say from my perspective, Karen, is you said growing up I didn't have a voice. Mm -hmm. And I believe that uh, emotionally healthy couples you feel you like you have a voice. Mm -hmm. You give each other a voice. And rather than rejecting each other and telling everybody, each other to shut up or, or ignoring <laughs> each other, mm -hmm. it's like if there's something happening, I want to know. Yeah, that's and good. you feel like you have a forum for mm -hmm. sharing. And I think that's the difference in our marriage today. Yeah, is rather than having to bottle everything up. And so you're, I mean, you're a very honest person. But we allow honesty in our relationship without paying a price. Mm -hmm. And because of that, we're able to process anger. We still have anger. I mean, we still have issues like everybody else. But we can process it. And I'm really glad the Lord told you about that, about your driving. Because <laughs> he's told me my driving is excellent. I love the humility. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for joining us today. We're so glad that you joined us. Also, thank you for being our partners. If you're not a partner, we want you to join us and be a monthly partner. The, our partners are precious. They're so important. 
to the ministry, and here's how you can become a partner right now. God bless you. When you stand with Marriage Today, your individual effort multiplies with other like-minded partners, and together we can rebuild the dream of marriage for couples around the world. I would recommend becoming a rock solid partner because you are grafting into a group of individuals that are committed to restoring marriage to this country and that's something we want to be a part of. In pursuit of this vital mission, Marriage Today utilizes a daily television broadcast, multiple live events, a comprehensive online outreach, and hundreds of marriage building resources. Your partnership is literally making every facet of this ministry possible. And that means couples are receiving the help and hope they need to take their marriage to the next level of fulfillment and intimacy. We enjoy the resources, we enjoy all of it, but I think just knowing that we're touching the lives of so many other marriages, creating an atmosphere for them to get the help they need. Being a rock solid partner with Marriage Today grants you immediate access to an exclusive library of the ministry's resources and intimately connects you with our mission of helping couples succeed in marriage. We're proof that, that the ministry is beneficial and that it works. It has helped um, to save us and that means that our children get to grow up with two parents in a home together. It makes a difference in our lives every single day that I couldn't imagine not being a partner. Everyone has something to give and there are millions of unreached couples who desperately need the marriage strengthening resources of marriage today. That's why we need you to join us. Become a rock solid partner with the ministry and mission of marriage today. Imagine the life changing teachings of Jimmy Evans and the romantic atmosphere of the EXO Marriage Conference. Now, imagine it taking place in the stunning blue waters of the Mediterranean Sea as you sail to iconic ports in Italy, Greece, and Croatia on a five star ship. That is exactly what's in store November 6th through 14th, 2017, on the EXO Marriage Cruise to the Mediterranean. Beginning in legendary Venice, Italy, we'll travel on the Oceana Riviera to destinations like the picturesque island of Corfu, Greece, the ancient churches and cobblestone streets of Kotor, Montenegro, and the dramatic cliffs and scenery of the Amalfi Coast. Spend your evenings growing closer than ever before as Jimmy Evans and other guests teach you how to build a dream marriage. Eight days of romance in one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Book your stateroom now. Thank you for watching Marriage Today with Jimmy and Karen. Support Marriage Today with your best gift and receive the series Emotionally Healthy Marriage. Join Jimmy and Karen Evans on the EXO Marriage Cruise to the Mediterranean, November 6th to 14th on the Oceana Riviera. Register now at exomarriagecruise.com. Become a rock solid partner today and connect with the mission of marriage today. Together, we can help couples succeed in marriage. This program is made possible by the generous support of our faithful partners.